get into. I'm finding more joy in writing now than anything else. Like truly, bro. Like if, if I were to like forget about the money shit or like what's best for my career or whatever, if it was just me and like my happiness levels, script writing is the thing, bro. Like that shit, it's all on me. It's all like I can create this entire world without having to deal with actors and all that bullshit. It's just me and the page, bro. That's it. It, it seems like that your tune has changed a little bit from the writing can, you know, be soul crushing to now actually that's kind of like your perspective is like, oh, it's kind of an opportunity in some ways. I love it, bro. It's it's so rewarding because it's like the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Um, but when you get it, it's like there's no feeling like it, bro, just because I think because it's so hard. That like when you actually get an idea that's working that you know is going to be really um, engaging and just have an impact, it's uh, it's a great feeling. I love it. Well, you've been keeping up this like four hour a day writing. Yeah, I've never made like the perfect week because that's fucking crazy. I usually dip like a couple hours below, but for the most part, I'm keeping it up. Oh my gosh! And how's that? affecting the writing how's that how's it all it's good dude it's uh it's like i know if i have an issue with the script if i'm spending four hours a day on it i can usually get get through it like pretty quickly like for example bro here's the crazy thing i'm on version three of fisherman right i've now gotten two different sets of notes and i still have a lot to go like there is a there's a lot of stuff that i still have to do to get it to its best possible place um, and I've just been spending time, like looking back at the log line and like rehashing those three lines. Like I've probably been doing that for like six, seven hours at this point, just getting back to it and like getting that to be exactly where it needs to be, because that's where everything else is going to come from. Cause I have to make these like big structural changes now to the whole narrative. Um, but I mean, that's the thing, bro. Like I used to just finish one script and when I'm done the first draft, I'd be like, okay, that's enough of that. I'm going to move on to the next, move on to the next. And all I ended up with was like seven very mediocre scripts that aren't going to get me anywhere. So I've learned like I actually have to do the hard stuff and take in the critiques, see what's stay with it. Stay with it. That's it. Bro. Stay jump. with it until the finish line. Always yeah. just jump. And wait, so back to the log line point that you made. Are you saying that you continuously have been editing that log line for six to seven hours? Or you've That's been- it. Just the log line. Because to accommodate the story that you already have, like, do you change the log line after you rewrite the script? No. So I'm, I'm going back to the log line before I make these third yeah. revision edits, because it's like, there are some major plot things that need to be changed. And if I'm sticking with the log line, it's like if I'm refining it and refining it and refining it to get to a really specific, like exciting place where anyone can read log it. Line. Like, refining, refining, refining the log line or refining just the log line. Story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And once I get the log line to its best possible place, even going through that process, it gives me the ideas of like how to build out the entire thing by just focusing in on those three sentences. Yeah. No, they say, I mean, if you're that passion knit about a log line or like, if you know if someone else wrote it first and or wrote the log line and they're like hey we need you to do like a rewrite on something we right. can always go back to that log line ideally to inspire what you're gonna write exactly 100 percent, 100 percent. you've been doing a little writing i have i have uh yeah did you did you get to read the uh the short that i sent you and laura bro i gave you my notes do you not get them no i didn't yeah, I sent you notes, like, I think a couple of days ago. Oh, no way. <laughs> Check your email, bro. <laughs> I will. Not right now, I guess, unless you want me to. But no, no, no. Yeah. That's astounding. Yeah. I mean, my biggest thing, which, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a big note, but, like, the biggest thing for me is, yeah. um, maybe I sent it to Laura by mistake. I don't know. Just let me know. But, like, the biggest thing that I found is... Um, oh, dude. Dang it. Yeah, it's all right here. And you did lovely notes okay thank anyway, you go on. yeah the biggest thing is like for shorts in particular one is like getting to the action 
as soon as you can. So it's like you're short ended off with all the exposition before we even enter the house. Yeah, so I feel like that's one thing of getting to the house as quick as possible for people who oh. are following the podcast. You'll actually like understand where we're going with this. But the second because right. we'll, we'll move on quick. But like the second point is um, for shorts in general, horror shorts, I found that the less dialogue, the better. So in its current form, it's really dialogue heavy, but you're able to get rid of so much of that stuff. And I can as di the director of it, I can communicate a lot of what you were putting in there through dialogue, just with the action and the facial expressions and all that stuff. Because we also want it to be for an international audience. And the less dialogue, the less they'll have to like, you know, not know what's going on and they'll just be able to understand. I mean, that's a very sophisticated way to look at it. <laughs> Obviously at this point though, it's story, 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 whatever's the most cinematic, interesting thing to show for us. Yes. And I'm gonna think about what's good for an international audience later. True, but, true, that's uh, true. And also, I think why I spent time on the dialogue and what they're doing there is because I thought that that was kind of the entertaining aspect about it was the lead up, the, psych the psychological kind of like torture of them going through this and her now realizing like, OK, I'm going to rob for these people and I'm going to like terrorize my boyfriend while I do that and seeing her go through that. But now that you mention it. This is why it's fun working with someone else because you get yeah, perspective shift. Um, obviously, I mean, I want to say, that, yeah, the main event probably is more cinematic of them actually robbing the place. And he has that uh, shock necklace on. Uh, I mean, by the end of it, dude, I was like, like, I was like, it ended right before they entered the house. And I'm like, fuck, butter. like that's, that's the meat of it that I wanted to see. Well, I also wondered, like, for the sake of this short, uh -huh. what, what, I mean, it, it's a question it poses. It's just a decision you make is like, where do you want it to take place? Do you want it to take place mostly right before and when they go into the robbery or is it the lead up, which happens to have backstory? Yes. You see the TikTok, you see all this. Um, and I don't know if there's a right answer right now, but. I mean, I think whatever, like whatever is the most impactful moment that could lead to a feature version is, and I, I don't know what the answer is at this point either, but I, I tend, I mean, it could also just be a personal preference, but for the most part, even what I've seen is like getting to the action as much as possible is usually more impactful than exposition. I mean, that is some action though, of her seeing like the comments, people saying, why didn't you go to the authorities? 100%. I think that's it. And I yeah. think we definitely still need that stuff to set the stage hundred okay. percent. It's, it's a great way to like pull us in, but I also really want to see what happens in the house too. You know, and is that just add that part or is it, I don't know. I, maybe I'll think on it too. And we'll come up with something. I don't know. Take a look at my notes, see if it's helpful throughout whatever is yeah. not. And yeah, yeah, we can go from there. Okay. I, uh, dude, um, What's crazy, something that I've found is with my writing, uh -huh. um, finishing each draft of The Fisherman, I felt like it was completely ready. And that's, again, going back to what I was saying of like, I used to just do first drafts. And then I purposely, like subconsciously, I was like, I don't want any feedback because I don't want to think this script is bad in any way. Even though it's not bad, it's just improving the script. But it's like, Getting to the place mentally where you pour your everything into a script, because to get to a feature version, it's like hundreds of hours to get to that place. But being able to get to the spot mentally where you can get out of your way and actually be open enough to take in that criticism and improve the script and not feel like personally attacked, at least in my experience, I've had to go through that. But it's so important, bro, because otherwise, like, how are you going to have a script that resonates with millions of people? You have to get out of your own way. You do. I, I think uh, same thing in life, right? Keep practicing that whole like, hey, at first, why not make a game about taking in uh, critiques and just say, like, you know, I'm literally I'm not going to feel bad about this in any way. That's going to come first. I'm going to actively work hard against that. To like, even based off what you just told me, let's say if I was like 
a really insecure person, which most artists are, they might be like, oh shit, someone gave me notes. Like, was it not great? Was it not great? And I would, my advice would be make a game out of it. Be so, it's not a reflection on you. Know that you are great. You have every other great thing going for you. Even that, make a game out of it. Say that even that's great. But then those literal notes, you're going to take in a positive way. Say, how can I, I'm a work in progress. My script is a work in progress. How can I make this 10% better each time? Well, let's try to make the most out of the notes that that person just gave me, like you would in any business, and see what we get. That's it. Totally. And also, you as the artist, being able to discern what is helpful versus what isn't. And that's also why whenever I give notes, I'm like, take whatever is useful to you and throw yeah. out whatever is not. Because a lot of it could just be difference of opinion. A know? lot of it contradicts itself. A lot of it will like psych you out, especially with yeah. acting stuff. That's like not easy to articulate. So at the end of the day, I think the first part is more important than the second part. I think people have more of a problem with the first part. Everyone just by default feels bad when they get notes. Yep. And so it takes active practice to be to get good and be like oh i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine. like genuinely fine and then you can be like okay now i'm at the starting line how do i genuinely get better every time we all have the same goal in fact i'm gonna filter out even the tone of how they said that because in sports sometimes you have coaches and stuff that they're not looking out to make you feel cushiony or good or anything at all it's cutthroat saturday night live i imagine is the same stuff everything and you got to figure out how to you know all comedy all everything and so you got to figure out how to uh, get the best product while also like keeping your sanity because your sanity and saying you're happiest is like the most important thing. Our minds can go to extremes so quick, at least me. I'm only talking from personal experience, but like if no, I someone agree, gives yeah. me a note that like triggers an insecurity and then all of a sudden I go to, oh, I, I'm not talented enough to take this to the finish line, that kind of shit. And I experienced that when I got these V3 notes back, there's this great guy who gives me feedback who he's like, he gives really, really solid notes. Um, but he also gives a scorecard for like five different things like character, pacing, plot, like all this stuff. There's a huge difference in Fisherman script from V2 to V3 or V1 to V2. Um, but the scoring that I got from him from the first draft to the second draft scoring number wise, even though there were a lot of differences was the exact same score. So getting that feedback at first, I had this instant, maybe like five to 10 minutes of the, oh man, like this sucks, like whatever. But once I got Where out, did of I go wrong? Here, exactly. But then once I got out of my own way, it gave me, I'm like, I don't want to waste any more time being in this mode. It's like, okay, you know, you got a lot of feedback. Let's now take that in, take what's useful and actually get back on the horse and let's go for a V3. And then I might have to go for V4 and V5. But what I'm most excited, something I love about this podcast is like, it's almost like a log in real time of like every single part stage of where we're at in our career. And it'll be really interesting to look back. I know my future self will look back on this podcast. I'm talking about like, oh, V3, like, you know, there were these notes that made me insecure in the beginning, whatever. But it's like, just knowing what my future self is looking back on this, I'm going to be like, it was completely necessary. I had to go through that process to get it to the stage it's at now, which is a really fucking strong script. It's just a process. I was just watching uh, Hard Knocks, the documentary on football a training camp nfl football now that we're like into the season deep in and uh it's on the detroit lions and they were cutting all the trainees that didn't make the team and they show the reactions and i think it, it relates to what we're talking about just in like rejection or getting notes or anything the people that handle it the best seem to be ones that know that they're going to stick with it and that they're willing to do anything to get better and have kind of like a easy going or at least try to and when you take it the worst and i'm guilty of this sounds like you are too and i think everyone is on some level is because you feel like hey they've they found out my secret i'm actually not, i don't deserve to be in this <laughs> yeah and they're, they're calling me on it and like wait i'm actually not in the right game so maybe 
maybe it's dead end and shit. And that's why it hurts so bad. Yeah. But, but and that's why, like, I've gotten critiques in all areas of my life, my social life, my personal life, my work life, everything. Every time it usually feels like, well, they're attacking me because I'm giving all I got. Right. And, and that's it. It's obviously not something that they like. Something that's helped get out of that whole like philosophy is because i think that's very human to feel that way too but um something that's helped is also to know that i think i heard the self-help thing one time that was like like 25 percent of people right off the bat are not going to like you no matter what you do so it's like if people aren't responding well to you chalk them up to that one out of four people right three uh one out of those four people are gonna like maybe not like you, but based on something that you do, you can, you can sway them. Yeah. One out of four of those people are going to like you, but can be swayed otherwise. And then one out of four people are going to, you know, love you unconditionally. That's how the thing goes. But I think with that, even just that kind of like game in your mind helps you realize that like, you don't have to win everyone over too. True. You do you, you take every piece of advice with a grain of salt. They might literally, I mean, I saw my dad's movie, some notes that he got back from like, he would send it to script doctors and stuff. They gave him notes that ultimately wouldn't have worked. And you start getting in your head too about like where, where the advice came from. Like, oh, that person is kind of jealous in this way or they're coming from this angle and I don't even want to appease that audience anyway. And stuff. so does that, and I don't know if that's necessarily good or bad, but at the end of the day, it's healthy to also recognize like, hey, this advice can't hurt me. I'm not going to take it in a hurtful way. I'm a work in progress. I'm here to get the best product and I'm not going to base my self-esteem off of it. But with that said, let's try it out. And if it doesn't work, it does not define me. That's a great attitude, bro. It's, it's a really difficult thing to not take personally um, because any creative endeavor- It's personal. It's personal. Yeah, it is literally personal, the nature yeah. of the thing, because it's you, you have you putting and you it. have to figure out a way to like be smarter than the personal. Yeah. 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 The end game for me and a lot of creatives is like, especially I'm just talking about scripts now, yeah. but the end game is having a script that's so fucking good that yes, some people aren't, aren't going to like it because of that 25% you're talking about. But like when you can have that script, that's so fucking good. You can take it to anyone, manage your agent, you get reps then, then you can get some people signed to it, all this shit. So the difficult point for me, and I'm sure a lot of people can resonate with this, is like, I finish a script revision. So either it's like V1, V2, now it's eventually going to be V3. And then once you finish it, you feel like you've arrived and you Think back to all the time, all the years you spent toiling away on scripts, trying to get better, trying to get better. And now you finally have this thing and this is going to be the thing. And then when you get notes back on that, if that's your attitude, you're crushed, bro. That's like, and you got to just, again, what you're saying about work in progress, it's yeah. you haven't arrived ever. It's right. always going to be a work in progress and you're just trying to get better and a little bit better, a little bit better. And then you've won. Totally. Well, and how's this too? After you make the damn thing, you get far enough to actually make it, whether it's a short, whether it's a thing, and yeah. then you show it to people. And then it's handling all the, the audience reactions, like from friends and stuff too. I've had like people start to, and I don't blame them at all. I can, in fact, I learned more about how to be a better audience member to try to be because I'll show people <laughs> my pilot or something and people like start giving advice as oh. after it's been done. Oh. Oh, he should have definitely said that at the beginning. Dude, and dude, it was like, you do realize, <laughs> that is, but which is just, I think, a funny thing in life. Yeah, but yeah. like, obviously, you can't go back and do it again. But for what it's worth, and this is the scary but also awesome part, is like my dad, for instance, has made three movies. It took him, in each one, you put your beyond your heart and soul into. Yeah. The first two. We're not really up to what he ultimately says is a good movie. Like they, the first one had great elements of it, but ultimately he says like he made it a little too corny and maybe got caught up in the trends at the time and got a little too Mighty Ducks with it. And then the second one he thinks was like funny, but ultimately didn't have enough of a good story. And then, but the performances were good, I think. 
But uh, and then and we'll miscast both of them in certain parts. And then this third one, obviously, he's very proud of, and it got reviewed really, really well. Top ten gambling movies of all time, you know. And there's still problems like with marketing and stuff that they feel. But isn't it just crazy that like, you know? And some people never get to make one movie. So totally, bro. And also something that I had to wrestle with recently is like feeling like like it's crazy what you just said about your dad doing three movies. It's a yeah. lot. Yeah. Me coming into LA with all like the energy and optimism of a 22 year old. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to hit the ground running. I'm going to make all of this stuff. I felt like the unrealistic expectations when you just don't have enough experience to where you think you can shell out like fucking 10 films before you're 30, that kind of shit. It's like, once you're actually in it, you then realize, okay, this whole thing is a process. Like if my expectations don't line up with what I've actually done, what I've executed on where I'm at in life, then that's okay. And usually that's the case of hey. the lineup. Yeah. So just coming to terms with that and being like, yo, it is dope that I've, that I'm working on this one script that I might have one feature script at this point that I'm proud of. That's enough. It's, it's a big deal. And you got to be proud of that. You got to remember to live, laugh, love along the way. It's true. Have your own scoreboard, have your goals, you know, key, it's important to keep the perspective of that to yourself. I think a good icon as a director for like a young guy is probably, you know, it's an impossible ceiling to get to, but Damien Chazelle, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, who did Whiplash and I was the biggest fan of La La Land, but, and uh, what? He's now doing this one. I just saw he signed with, yeah. I think, Brad Pitt or something. Yeah. Be. Babylon. Is that? The yeah. One? Yeah, I, I see the guy out on the West Side a lot, too, like at, you know, sushi places and stuff. But he... Uh, Damien or Brad? What? Damien or Brad? Damien. Okay. I'll call him Damien. I'll call him Dame. Yeah. Damo. Uh, he, you know, like, just... He got his first film, Whiplash. We talked about it, but the short into Sundance with J.K. Simmons already, then it got turned into that big feature film, whatever. They did yeah. a lot of stuff. But he, he's very stylish filmmaker. He's, he puts a lot of his passions into his movie, like music is his big thing. And um, as someone that's succeeded, that's young. Dude, he's 37 now, yeah? Wow, is he? Um, Time goes by. The short... <laughs> The short film came out in 2012. Sounds about right. Okay. So, which is actually crazy. Or this is 20, yeah, 2012. So 2012 is what? Um, 10 years ago? Yeah. So he was 27 when he came out with that short. That's older than I thought. I mean, that's the thing, bro. Like, I feel like, and maybe this is only my reality of like the pressures I've put on myself, but do you ever get overwhelmed or even think about that age timeline thing? Because that is a very common thing of people like benchmarking themselves, comparing their age to other people's ages who've like made it at a certain point. Is right. that, has that ever even come across your mind has, or is that like a non-issue? Not at all. And why is that? What no, I'm completely is, kidding. Yeah. I'm completely <laughs> Dude, kidding. I'm like, Fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I'll figure it out. I think I'd be a sociopath if it didn't. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I have like little excuses in my mind of like, well, you know, it seems a little longer for me as an actor because I went to college. Most actors don't go to college and <laughs> grad school and all this stuff. Um, <laughs> Dude, I mean, I did, I did a music video yesterday, by the way, which I want to talk more about. But I mean, cool. most of the young actors in it and stuff are like, 19 and stuff and so and i'm 29 yeah. which i don't look as old as some 29 year olds for sure but it's something that oh. i find uh i pegged you at probably like 25 26 yeah. yeah 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 um and so like it's something that i do add it to another one of those things that we talk about self-help wise which is like you gotta have your own scoreboard 
and I've done more than some, not as much as others. And at the end of the day, I know that I'm going according to a plan. You know, I have my own intentions, my own goals, and that's much more important to me than age, you know, because the reality is, and it's not easy to keep this in perspective, but I, I think it's important to try. You got to try and like, whether it's reading positive stuff or whatever, that um, stuff's out of your control. And all, all you can really do is have, again, have those goals and live, laugh, love along the way. So it's like, dude, I, I try to remind myself, it's not living in the past, but I remind myself of stuff that I've accomplished that I might not have imagined at one point that I've accomplished, like we talked about. And then, I mean, that's a real thing. What you just said is real. And I think it, that's a big part, right? You got to remind yourself of your like big moments. Dude, the fact it's so, it's fucking crazy, bro. One mm-hmm. of my shorts hit a million views that I posted five months ago. And now I feel like it's literally the way the human mind works. Yeah. If I, I mean, bro, I just like, I just posted about my whole, like it, Burn Mill Road used to be called Scary as Short, which was really limiting and a very uh, gen- generic title. But it used to be, when I kicked that off, that was two years ago. Okay. If I would have told my two years ago self that I would have a short that was over a million views. I'd be fucking stoked out of my mind. And just the way that the human mind works, if you don't have the right perspective of how, like, yeah, bro, the first week that that happened, I was floored. But right. then after that, it starts to, you know, and then it just becomes your new normal. And I'm like, like how, I mean, how far is that going to go? I get my wide release feature and then it like doesn't make a certain amount of millions of dollars. Like, that's fucked. You can't live your life like that. You better find some other stuff you like is the point. <laughs> better what? Find some other stuff that you like as yeah. well. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, too, you keep just distracting yourself. Life is one big distraction. It's like, oh, now I'm bored of this. Well, at least I have my surfing that I'm excited about. The surf's good. Yeah. Oh, I'm bored of my surfing. Well, at least I have my family, you know, my relationships that are fun. Oh, well, that's boring. Well, at least I get to go to a sports game. <laughs> Yeah. Got to keep finding stuff, hopefully. Um, yeah. And it's important like to have a well rounding thing. Yeah. Okay. And you got to re- remind yourself that that's a big deal perspective. And I think count your blessings, like what you're thankful for. Try to, uh, like a technique that I've used is like, <laughs> it might sound cruel, but think about it from someone's perspective that hasn't experienced what you've experienced. So, like, right. Think about it from the perspective of someone that, like, uh, wants to be an actor and they don't know anyone in Hollywood. They don't think they can break in and they're insecure. They don't know where to start. And then they look at you and you have a million views on your short film and you've made a film and you can act, you have an acting degree. You went to college, you did all this stuff. It's like, they're going to be like, Whoa, uh, this guy's got a lot going for them. So and then it's a matter of age, you're just like, Oh, he's just a young guy that's crushing it. Yeah, bro. Everything is a matter of perspective because it separates us from the schmucks, the sheep. Perspective. Like being able to like use it to our advantage perspective. Yeah. That's like a, yeah. The master, you got to be a master of your mind. Ideally, bro. That's so fucking true. Otherwise your mind's going to run you. And I like what you said too, about uh, what's in your control. I'm writing down all these, by the way. It's, it's good notes. These will be in the oh, show. Oh, I'm, I'm honored. There we um, go. I, I got many more of them, too. <laughs> Words of wisdom. Self-help <laughs> podcast. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what you said about everything being in your control, focusing on those things, that's definitely, that's like a stoic philosophy. That's something yeah, yeah. that I've definitely keyed into a lot in my life. And that's been extremely helpful of like, what do I have? Like, either... Either as far as my writing goes, I can either choose to like, be like, okay, how many hours can I log today just writing as opposed to how long is it going to take for a rep to reach out to me and, you know, get this person attached to my script. Like it's, that's just a waste of time and it's not good for your mentality. You got to focus on what you can control. Yeah, no, that's a very good way to put it. And then you can just hone in on the stuff that's in your control. Yeah. Have you watched anything good this week? 
I haven't wait. So I want to tell you about this music video I did. Oh yeah. First, if I may. Um, so I got a text from my buddy Tanner, who I do value mentality with. He's a creative guy and an actor. And he's like, uh, you want to be in this music video? I'm like, do you think it's cool? Like, I, I'm down to do something if you recommend it. He's like, well, I'm directing. So yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it might as well. Um, and I'm like, word, okay, yeah, I'll show up. Figuring like, I don't know if I'll be an extra or whatever, but maybe it'll be fun just hanging out. Turns out, it's this really cool, like high production value music video that our buddy Connor and Tanner are directing. And Connor's like a huge videographer for Sean Mendez and everything. And, and they're doing this video with their buddy, who's like a rapper. And we did it in a boxing gym in South Central. Yo, that's yeah. sick. And it was just so atmospheric and beautiful. And of course they have the smoke and stuff, like a lot of the smoke machines and, and it just looks so great on film and stuff. And I played one of the trainers for the boxer. Sick. And like me and one other dude. And we're like getting pissed like at each other. And we have another point where we have to, we get in the ring and we're like going crazy. And <laughs> afterwards they were just so appreciative just that, you know, all my stuff. I was in a few different little scenes and like, dude, you just brought it like our favorite performance of the movie or whatever. And yeah. even though it was subtle, it was nothing, it was all ad libbed, like little stuff, but Again, I responded. I'm like, it's fun being at a point where all three of us know how to make a scene better. We know how to add to a scene. Right. And it's true, dude. Tanner, who's an actor, director, he knows how to make an acting scene good. He gets into it. I mean, I know for myself, it is an acting thing. I know what I'm doing now. I, I lock in. I think like, just by default, I think what would my character be doing in that moment yeah, in real bro. life? And it's not as like literal as like, oh, who's my character? Am I named Gerard? And Gerard would do it. No, it's like, what would what would a boxing, <laughs> trainer, be, what would a boxing trainer be doing to this guy in that moment? What would he be yeah. thinking about? And so when the when the guy who's in the music video who's supposed to be the boxer looks at me and he's like, he's like, even though he's like rapping and he like looks at me like that, I'm looking at him like, and they're like, psych him up, psych him up. I'm like thinking like, okay, make believe that this is real, and I'm locked. I'm just locked into that mindset. I don't question myself anymore. Whereas I used to, and I, it's great to appreciate because I remember being where they would call action and I honestly felt a little like brain dead, didn't know what to do. Bro, that's all experience. It's that's experience. all experience. And it's like- But I must say, man, I'm so sorry to cut you off. Go for it, yeah, yeah. There was a distinct moment where I felt that I officially- and it's all a lame psychological thing to say, but I felt like I locked into character with someone. And it was an acting class where after a number of times, and I had been practicing after class so much with these people. And it was great. It was that great class I told you about. It was all about the writing. And everyone would talk about like, think the thoughts of the character. Think the thoughts right. of the character. Like it's as simple as like, you know, you're supposed to like write them down or something. What would my character be say? or be thinking if there was no line, you know, yeah. like stay in the headspace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I never actually committed to it around other people up until that point. Maybe when I was like by myself, I'd be thinking about what would it be like to be in this situation and stuff, but I never really did it with other people there. And then it was something someone said or something. And obviously I was past the point of thinking about lines and it was an action sequence. And I was so used to like going into scenes feeling like I wasn't in the scene really i was just insecure and self-conscious and then someone it was an action scene and me and this guy were supposed to play like uh two guys that were going through this obstacle court like it might as well have been ready player one or something yeah. you know the sides from that and i remember we looked at each other and i for a second it sounds so corny but i tried not to see him as the person doing the scene and i thought oh i'm this guy you know player z and he's player y and we're about to go into this and he's been cussing at me and sad at me and what happened the moment before and then what are we about to face and i got into the circumstances mentally i tried to distract myself with those thoughts and then i looked at him in the eyes and we went to the scene and we were no longer the actors we were like i believed it oh, he believed it he was right there with you he was right there with me and it led me to believe that probably most of the actors in that class before that had also been with me it's just i wasn't with them yet yeah, and I didn't yeah, really right. know how to get with them. And I don't think you have to have that, but Peter O'Toole, you know, the iconic British actor, 
talks about in his book when he got to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. He's like, oh my gosh, our fifth day of acting. He's like, and then it happened. I looked at the other actor and I was in character. And it's fleeting, <laughs> but I was in character. Was that that moment and everything. What's that? And it was that thing for you. It, and it was that, I know exactly what he's talking about. And at the end of the day, like what that means is it's, it's just going to be effortless and you're just going to be in that story. I've seen you in it. Obviously we, we're always in it when we're doing it because it's pretty simple, but um, it's funny how like when I'm even in a music video, it could be one line, it could be one moment. I just lock into like what's going on and I make believe well. Dude, the fact that you can now consistently execute that is yep. what you need. And I've only, in my four years of acting school, I only experienced that once. And it is like entering, to me, I call it the flow state. Like- It is the flow, you're flowing. You yeah. feel it, bro. And it's like a different, you don't feel like you're acting then. You're just, you're there. Yeah, you're, you're, and living in it's fun. Experience. Oh my gosh, yes. It's the that best. I mean, like, I'm not still looking at where the camera is located and able to like have my actor brain on too and be technical. But, it, you know, it just, it's great. I'm keeping time. we got a minute and a half left. Right? Yes. I saw your cousin's show. No kidding. She's fucking unreal, bro. She does a no really kidding. good job. I mean, it's also not just that, too. It's like the cinematography, the story, everything. It was really cohesive and, and nice, bro. When I see you to say, did I, did I bring it up last time? You did. I, I probably did, right? Yeah, you said it was a little saucy. It's kind Good of weird. Yeah. yeah, a little Fifty Shades of Grey vibe. But it, uh, like, I think my takeaway is it brings up some interesting stuff about college that hasn't completely been touched on before. It's, like, kind of fresh and, like, interesting. And obviously she she plays that character super well in the circumstances and stuff. And the guy's really good, too. They're all good. Um, I know. I got to watch the second episode now. I'm excited. There is a moment, uh, that first episode, it's the very end and all the elements came together. It's like the last two minutes, if you rewatch it. Yeah. And it's, it, I mean, mostly coming from director's background, it's like the cinematography, bro. Everything about that moment, the steady cam shots, all that shit, unreal. What did you watch this week? You got 25 seconds. Uh, nothing comes to mind. You, anything in particular? Uh, the Patient is also good. I brought it up before, but Donald Gleason, Steve Carell. I gotta get on. I've been thinking about that, bro. I've been watching also the new Lord of the Rings, the new Game of Thrones. Hell yeah. I'll cool. check those out. Yeah, yeah, of course. Until next time, brother. My boy. Real. Talk Peace. later.